In the summer of 2022, speedrunning history was made. The world record Luigi's Mansion Any% speedrun finally broke the category's final minute barrier, with a final time of 7 minutes and 59 seconds. Whoa, 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 time out. That's under 8 minutes. Sure, Luigi's Mansion is a short game, but that is way shorter than you may remember. But for the past 10 years, speedrunners have completely broken Luigi's Mansion, to the point where it can be beaten that quickly. Even just a couple years ago, this milestone seemed impossible, unobtainable, yet here we are. To fully understand how we got here, we must travel back in time to see what Luigi's Mansion speedruns were like almost a decade ago. The year is 2013, the era of to earn. Speedrunning is booming in popularity. The dawn of the Twitch era of speedrunning brought an unprecedented number of new runners onto the scene, and Luigi's Mansion was gaining a fair share in popularity. Compared to other popular speed games at the time, however, Luigi's Mansion speedruns were not known for game-breaking glitches or sequence breaks, but rather catching ghosts, clearing rooms, solving puzzles, and getting trolled by Boo RNG as fast as possible. Some interesting things to note are that runs were performed on NTSC versions of the game on the Hidden Mansion difficulty, which is unlocked after clearing the game for the first time. The initial benefit is that you can completely skip the opening section of the game before meeting Professor E. Gad and training with the ghost-catching vacuum cleaner, the Poltergust 3000. The major benefit of Hidden Mansion, however, is that the Poltergust is much more powerful, draining enemy ghost HP twice as fast, allowing them to be caught much quicker. So, in the end, playing on the harder difficulty is more than worth it. Back to the run. It goes about the same intended route that you'd expect from a normal playthrough, just much faster and a bit more optimal. Any percent runs during this time period were just over an hour long, and didn't really have much in terms of useful glitches or anything. This would be forever changed in March 2013, when a notable glitch hunter destroyed the game seemingly overnight. His name was Clyde Storm. Now, there's a good chance you may have heard of this user from somewhere. Like, I don't know, the original Luigi wins by doing absolutely nothing video? Yeah, this dude was responsible for the beginning of that meme. But more importantly, Clyde was an accomplished glitch hunter in several games, most notably Zelda games like Wind Waker. It appears that after 2013 though, his YouTube channel appears to be abandoned. But boy did he go out with a bang. On March 18th, 2013, Clyde Storm would post a few YouTube videos and on the Speed Demos archive forums, taking the speedrunning world by storm. In these videos, Clyde showcases a glitch discovered by Endgamer back in 2011, known as Floor 1.5. After capturing the Area 1 boss, Chauncey, you can clip behind this chest by holding upright on the control stick as soon as Luigi warps back from the boss arena. When Luigi wedged between the back of the chest and the northern wall, you can push Luigi out of bounds by either pressing A to knock the wall and then hold forward for a teeny bit, or by using the vacuum with R and then tapping forward on the control stick when Luigi is putting the vacuum away after releasing R. In this state, Luigi is wedged between floors 1 and 2, hence the name Floor 1.5. Despite this glitch being documented for almost two years, there really wasn't much that could be done in Floor 1.5, until Clyde had discovered the skew. When controlling Luigi in sidestep mode in dark rooms and hallways, the control stick will move Luigi around without changing the angle he's facing, while the C stick is used to change his facing direction and angle, much like when he is using the poltergust. One interesting quirk of sidestep mode, especially on Floor 1.5, is that if you're changing angles with a C stick as you get hit and take damage, like with bats, Luigi's standing angle could skew. This skew can be retained when walking in sidestep mode, and this comes with some interesting consequences. When skewed, Luigi's collision is altered, allowing him to clip through otherwise impenetrable walls and even fall into certain rooms. Clyde toyed around with floor 1.5 skews for a bit, but many of the discoveries were a bit disappointing, leading to dead ends or even soft locks. 
However, with the skew's ability to clip almost anywhere, Clyde Storm discovered that it was possible to clip past the wall in the foyer to walk above the dark hallways of Area 2, clip down into this corner in the basement, and walk along a paper-thin path to the secret altar, where the final battle against King Boo begins. To say the skip was a massive is an understatement. This method of reaching King Boo early skips not only all of areas 2, 3, and 4, but also the need to collect Mario's 5 items, the 3 elements, and every Boo in the game. The time save was enormous. However, Clyde had discovered and demonstrated this using emulator tools, similar to a TAS or tool-assisted speedrun. He expressed dismay about the skew in particular, noting how difficult it was to get the correct skew for the clips required, and finding a good position to clip down into the basement, not to mention how difficult it was to walk into the secret altar out of bounds. The fact that this part of the skip works at all is nothing short of a miracle. The path Luigi walks on to walk into the altar is absurdly narrow, made especially difficult with the walls obscuring your view of Luigi, and you can't really tell what's going on. Walk too far to the left, and you activate a conversation with King Boo, who blows Luigi back to the foyer when he has less than 40 boos. Walk too far to the right, and you'll be softlocked. Unfortunately, early King Boo did not seem viable for humans quite yet, but thankfully, that wouldn't be the case for much longer. A few days later, another glitch hunter would enter the mix, not only setting a new world record of 16 minutes and 55 seconds, but creating a consistent setup that made early King Boo humanly viable for speedruns. This user's name was Sockfolder. Sockfolder is a glitch hunter and tasser who at the time primarily worked on glitches and setups in Ocarina of Time. You may also know him as the person who created consistent setups for Canalys in Mario 64 in 2014, and the flagpole glitch in Super Mario Bros. in 2016. He's also made significant discoveries in other games, and Luigi's Mansion is no exception. By March 21st, 2013, Sockfolder had figured out a reliable method for early King Boo, which would serve as the foundation for the Any% percent route, which still persists to this very day. After clearing Area 1 and defeating Chauncey as intended, Sockfolder performs the Out of Bounds clip behind the chest and switches to sidestep mode. Next, he walks to the right and opens up the door to the foyer. On floor 1.5, opening doors is much more awkward and slower than normal, as it will take 11 seconds for Luigi to open and walk through the door. Next, he performs the next skew by getting the bat to hit Luigi's right toe area for the proper angle. He then walks down this corner and rotates clockwise to clip past the wall. Sockfolder then walks above the floor 1 hallway, changing his facing angle throughout in order to keep his flashlight shining down in the hallway, preventing any ghosts from spawning, which can scare Luigi and cause him to fall down to floor 1. On the rear end of the hallway, Sockfolder resets his skew by switching back to standard mode, and then switches back to sidestep. He then pulls out the vacuum to draw the bats to the right near the corner. This skew is a little more precise than the first, but thankfully, Sockfolder created a reliable setup. By using the Y button to pull up the map and put it away, he could pause buffer Luigi running into the bats, and C stick to the right for a brief moment to get the correct skew. Switching briefly to standard mode, he makes Luigi's angle his flashlight upward so he can get into the corner, before switching back to sidestep and backing into the corner where he will fall into the basement. He then looks down, switches to standard mode, and holds upright on the control stick while still paused. While holding this direction, Sockfolder then presses A to unpause, and then presses X a frame later to pull out the Game Boy Horror camera just as Luigi's about to turn. His camera prevents him from turning the other way completely, but just enough to successfully fall into the basement. Now, for the hard part. Sockfolder moves Luigi out of bounds until this pillar lines up with the left side of the screen. Then, he uses the Game Boy Horror camera to guide himself across the fine line to King Boo, making quick movements forward before pulling out the camera again, each time to readjust, until he's through. From there, he defeats King Boo, and the run is finished. Over the next few days, Sockfolder lowered his record down to an 11.52, 
then a 1054, and then a 955.9, bringing the world record below 10 minutes. Sockfolder had never played Luigi's Mansion prior to Clyde's discoveries, and as a result, his gameplay wasn't the most refined. But thanks to his knack for creating consistent glitch setups, he laid down the groundwork for Out of Bounds for years to come. It's worth pointing out that Sockfolder's runs were performed on an emulator. The first runs to be completed on console were done by an Australian speedrunner, Luke HHHH. On March 24th, he would achieve a 12.26 on console as a benchmark time. He would lower his personal best over the next month, eventually beating Sockfolder by half a second in April. With this record, Luke began to save time in the basement, walking blindly to the secret altar after lining up with the pillar. A bit more risky for sure, but with this and more refined gameplay, Luke lowered the record down to a 9.27 on June 13th. A pretty solid run for the time. Going back to March 21st for a second, Clyde Storm would post one final video, showcasing another theoretical strat that he believed to be TAS only, Two Cycle King Boo. In an optimal speedrun, runners would defeat King Boo in three cycles. Each cycle consists of blowing off Bowser's head with a bomb using the vacuum, and then draining as much HP as possible from King Boo before he retreats back into his Bowser suit. King Boo has by far the most HP out of any ghost in the game, 500. When performing 3 cycle, speedrunners would stop sucking King Boo before he falls below 200 HP on the second cycle, because if King Boo retreats back into Bowser below that threshold, Bowser's head would be put on backwards, causing him to run around before correcting his head, wasting precious time. In this tool assisted demonstration, Clyde Storm proved that if you were lucky enough, King Boo could fly in an opportune pattern to make this possible, provided you can predict exactly where he's gonna fly, and you can catch him before he retreats back into Bowser. This was certainly asking a bit much for a human, and seemed unviable for runs. In fact, it took until August 2nd for Luke to become the first human to pull off the two cycle in practice, a testament to its insane difficulty. What was humanly possible was a way to end the King Boo fight even earlier. On May 22nd, 2013, speedrunner HFK King accidentally touched King Boo's crown while sucking him up, ending the fight instantly. Luke and another runner, Mallow Monster, formerly known as Firecrotch219, discovered how this glitch worked, and discovered it was exclusive to the Japanese version of the game. Unfortunately, this strategy would not be allowed in speedruns, as it stores the ending cutscene, preventing the game's credit sequence from playing properly, and in doing so, the game never properly ends. This two-cycle dilemma would not last much longer, however, as on August 23rd, Coopery would discover a technique that changed the game forever, R pumping. By holding down L to discharge from the vacuum while sucking with R, you can release R for a brief moment before pressing again when catching booze every 10 HP drained. This had a massive effect on the main categories, notably any percent no out of bounds and 100% with more consistent boo captures. This also made the two cycle king boo much more viable for runs, and so R pumping began to be used for both cycles, quickly becoming the standard for top level play. Funnily enough, Cooper and the Luigi's Mansion community were oblivious to the fact that this glitch was discovered a year prior by Zany Witch 7, and that it had been hiding in plain sight the whole time. Back to any percent. This category was split between out of bounds and no out of bounds variants back in March 2013, and to this day, no out of bounds remains the vastly more popular category. As such, people did not compete for this record very often, but often with the advent of new strategies, the record would eventually fall. We can see that Luke's record was beaten by V-Man 3000 on September 18th, 2013, with a 919. From 2013 to 2015, V-Man was certainly the best all-around Luigi's Mansion speedrunner, and also dominated any percent no out of bounds and 100%. Unfortunately, the any percent world records from the second half of 2013 until 2016 were not very well documented, 
as V-Man deleted all his runs and videos several years ago. The only surviving proof I have of his any percent records during this time period are courtesy of Glitch PhD, who found and provided a screenshot of the old Google Sheets leaderboard, which predates speedrun.com, as well as two records from 2014, a 904, as well as a run that broke the 9 minute barrier, 849. In these surviving runs, we can see V-Man use our pumping to pull off the King Boo 2 cycle, and in his 849, he had much cleaner movement, and no longer pause buffered the second skew. It is unknown whether he got any times lower than that, but on May 7, 2016, Linkus 7 achieved a new world record of 844. Yes, that Linkus. Here, we can see that the overall cleaner execution in capturing ghosts, optimizations with catching the balls in the Chauncey fight, a faster basement clip, and using the vacuum to move slightly slower for a more consistent lineup with the pillar before the secret altar. 2016 would be rounded off by HD Lax achieving an 834 on December 14th, making clever use of the Game Boy Horror camera to prevent Luigi from getting scared when the first ghosts spawn in the ante room and the wardrobe room, so he can catch them a bit faster. Previously, at the start of Floor Point 15, you'd still have to painfully wait for Luigi to slowly open this door. Thankfully, this was no longer the case, as runners began implementing door skip into their runs. To skip the door, HD pulled off an earlier skew off of these bats and then rotated counterclockwise before knocking the wall at the correct spot with good timing to clip past the door, saving 11 seconds. In February 2017, runner Michael T. Hundred accidentally discovered map glitch when soft resetting the game by holding the start, B, and X buttons. When you do that but also mash Y and A, there's a solid chance that you open up the map screen right before the soft reset happens, preventing the map from being opened by pressing Y and skipping the map popping up after collecting a key. While this saved several seconds in longer categories, the time save was more minuscule in any percent, as you only collect four keys throughout the entire run. But hey, free time save is still free time save! There were a brief couple weeks in May and June 2017 where the record was traded between SCSI, HD, and SNAP32, but otherwise, it seemed that any percent was approaching its limit. It wouldn't be until May 10th, 2019, when the record would be finally broken again, down to an 827 by Mini Mini, with the help of a new strat in the Chauncey fight. After releasing him before he falls to 50 HP, you'd wait for his easily avoidable slam attack to end before the next round of Rocky Horsies come. Instead, Mini Mini implemented a new strat, where he purposely gets hit at the start of the second cycle and stands under Chauncey at certain spots during his slam attack to shift him slightly forwards. This allows for the attack to end faster, saving a bit of time. At this point, any percent was becoming insanely optimized. From July 2019 to March 2020, HD Lax would supposedly hold the world record of 826. Meanwhile, Pablo, a new runner from the Netherlands, began speedrunning in the summer of 2019, and he improved at the game at an alarming rate. He quickly snagged the PAL version records and shot up to top 10 in no out of bounds in December. By March 2020, Pablo also got an 827 in any percent, seemingly one second off of HD's record. In a hilarious turn of events, a month later, Shift would retime the top four runs on any percent and discovered that HD's 826 was actually an 827, as he had split quite a bit early, and that Pablo's 827 was a fraction of a second faster. So, Pablo was the true world record holder, and 826 had yet to be achieved. But then... In September 2020, Pablo had quite the explosive month. Not only did he claim the no out of bounds record for the first time with a 5557, but he had seemingly accomplished a near flawless any percent run of 823. This was THE run, and was certainly on the verge of complete optimization. Even Pablo seemed to think that this was the end of the line for him, and for all intents and purposes, he had no reason to believe otherwise. 
He literally tied his sum of best in his splits. You can't get much more perfect than that. But if you've followed speedrunning for any amount of time, you usually know how poorly aged these declarations are. Even so, I doubt anyone could have predicted the madness that was about to unfold. On December 11th, 2020, speedrunner Red's MSR was dared by a Luigi's Mansion 2 speedrunner, Vicious, to three-cycle King Boo with his feet. Yeah, really. Red accepted, as he was down for a stupid, dumb challenge out of sheer boredom. During this dumb challenge, the mood would suddenly shift when during one of his attempts, something strange happened. Um, maybe. Uh, uh, it it yeah. decides on if he wants to take the risk, because I only said 3-cycle, I didn't say it has to be a fast 3-cycle. If, if he keeps King Boo at above 200, then he's really No, okay, he's just gonna go for a slow 3-cycle. Red had accidentally shot Bowser's head AGAIN with one of the remaining bombs, just after hitting his head off to release King Boo. Red soon noticed that something was off, as it took longer for Bowser's head to loom over Luigi than it usually does. This oddity immediately raised eyebrows, and Red began to investigate. This could be big. He was also on a Discord call with fellow runners Saria100 and Crazy8 the Ace, the latter of whom suggested that Red shoot off Bowser's head just as he throws the bombs. Normally, you'd have to wait until Bowser bends down in order to hit his head, but now, with the proper angle, you can shoot the bomb instantly after it attaches to the vacuum via suction. This early shot was known about for quite a while, but wasn't previously useful, as King Boo's period of vulnerability would expire before he could be finished off. By putting these two headshots together in the same cycle, Red came to the realization that a one-cycle King Boo fight might just be possible. Since you hit Bowser so early, hitting his head a second time with one of the remaining bombs might buy you just enough time to capture King Boo in one go. The question was, could it be done? With the pieces of the puzzle coming together, on December 12, 2020, a bunch of Luigi's Mansion runners hopped on a Discord call, sharing their screens to see who could pull off a one cycle first. One hour into the call, Saria did this. I'm jealous surprised Minnie has a twin. Minnie's it's asleep, like, dude. dude. Good morning. This is like 5 in the morning, I think. We're... That's it. Yeah! Oh my gosh! It's been done! Oh, oh my gosh, guys. Saria. Saria. Oh my god. Oh my god. The one cycle was real. The call filled with absolute elation. But as it turned out, it was really hard. With the strat being so new, and King Boo getting in the way a lot, people weren't quite comfortable going for it in runs just yet. The next day, HD would beat Pablo's record by 2 seconds using the new quick shot strat, but opted to stick to the 2 cycle for now. It would take a while for 1 cycles to become a world record requirement. In January 2021, Snap would pour dozens of hours labbing the one cycle in an effort to develop a consistent method. After getting the quick shot on Bowser, you can manipulate King Boo's flying path with the vacuum for a bit until he reaches about 400 HP. After that, you can take advantage of the GameCube controller's analog triggers and barely keep R held to keep sucking with the vacuum without automatically locking on the King Boo, as well as moving him out of the way, as he would otherwise block the bomb from hitting Bowser. This allows for the remaining bomb to be shot back at Bowser's head, and for Luigi to drain King Boo immediately after the shot. A couple R pumps are performed to keep King Boo flying low. From there, he can be drained normally until you need to R pump when he's under 100 HP until the fight is won. Snap's method was very promising, but still very difficult. It took a lot of practice. But on February 25th, 
HD would set the first any percent world record with one Cycle King Boo. 809, which was 11 seconds faster than the record he just got a few weeks earlier. Heading into the spring on March 5th, another top runner, Joven, was on pace to beat his PB by 3 seconds upon entering the King Boo fight, assuming he performed the Insta Shot 2 cycle, because at this point, one cycle was the exception, not the rule. But just because he felt like it, Joven went for one cycle without much expectation. And as a result, this happened. What? What? I missed HD by half a second. He scored a solid second place time just half a second slower than HD out of nowhere. Heading into April, Pablo would take back the record before lowering it to an 804. Pablo would only return to improve his record thanks to a new small time save on King Boo, known as TAS 1 Cycle. This was thanks to a faster Insta shot being found for the initial headshot, which hit Bowser so early, Bowser only throws two of the three bombs, while he never throws the third one. This soft locks the game if you miss the one cycle, by the way, as he'll never throw new ones while the third one's still in his hand, so that's fun. Pablo would improve his record by a couple hundred milliseconds in October. It was pretty hard to ignore how close any percent was to falling below eight minutes, but by the end of the year, it remained just out of reach. One cycle King Boo alone just wasn't enough. Any percent seemed to have reached its limit yet again. As the new year approached, however, the tides began to turn. On December 14th, 2021, Taylor, also known as Never Doors, famous for his Ocarina of Time All Dungeons No Doors task, uploaded a new Luigi's Mansion Any Percent task on YouTube, which was officially published on taskvideos.org on January 27th, 2022. The task was timed to be a 927 from power on, which when converted to the standard timing used in regular speedruns, was a 743. While some improvements, such as skipping the third skew, were impractical for humans, some were more promising. One crucial time save was discovered by a modder of the game, Laser Crusader. Normally when activating the Chauncey fight, you suck the rocking horse to wake Chauncey, before he says he wants to play or something. Luigi gets spooked, and the player finally regains control to shoot a ball back at Chauncey to start the fight. However, by vacuuming the rocking horse while hugging the left wall between that and the crib, you can continue to suck with the vacuum and bring the ball over to hit Chauncey faster, skipping his first text box in Luigi's scared animation, saving around 2 seconds. Thanks to Laser Crusader, HD took the record back with an 802 on March 16th. Sub 8 was certainly on the horizon, but HD decided to take a break from the category so he can prove his no out of bounds in hundo times first. With HD taking a break from any percent, Joven and Pablo were the prime contenders for sub 8. Pablo came close in April, and despite a subpar area 1 and scuffed door skip, he managed to save some time by skipping the knock before the last skew. A very risky and inconsistent strat. He entered the King Boo fight on pace to get 8 minutes flat. But maybe, just maybe, he could get the best King Boo fight of his life and clutch the sub 8. The fight began. And then, this happened. He choked. Better luck next time. Following this failed attempt, Pablo decided to abandon a knockless second skew. Instead, he opted to tackle one of his few weaknesses. Mashing. Despite Pablo arguably being the best Luigi's Mansion runner by 2022, his ability to mash through text boxes quickly wasn't as good as his rivals. However, in speedrunning, people are more inclined to help each other out, 
as rising tides raises all ships, and therefore makes competition more tight and interesting. In late June, the top three runners would meet in person for the first time at the speedrunning marathon Summer Games Done Quick 2022. Everyone was having a blast, but in addition to having the time of his life, Pablo took the time to improve his mashing ability, and Jovin was more than willing to help. By using the double thumb method people use to destroy their friends at Mario Party minigames like I do, Pablo began to mash much faster than before. After SGDQ concluded and Pablo arrived home from America, he began to grind any percent again. And as fate would have it, on July 6, Pablo got this run. I cannot believe it. <laughs> Without knockless seconds cube. What is it area one? How did I? It's dude. It's the mashing. That's the only thing I can say. It's, uh... He had done it. Pablo became the first person to beat Luigi's Mansion in under eight minutes. The final minute barrier this category may ever see. This is one of the greatest milestones achieved in speedrunning in 2022, and I wish this achievement got the praise it deserved as it happened, and I hope this video can make this story more well known. While this run could technically be beaten, it probably won't happen for a while. While King Boo can finally be one-cycled, Chauncey remains at large, and if not even the task can pull it off, it doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. Huge congrats to Pablo for making history. Please check out his stream, as well as the other Luigi's Mansion runners too. Thank you so much for watching, and remember to sh- Oh my god, I got it! Oh my god! Oh my god! As I was working on this video, on November 17th, Glitch PhD received a message from one of his friends, Pike, who encountered a strange glitch when fighting Chauncey. After Chauncey broke free, his heart and HP remained exposed, which is definitely not normal. Immediately, Glitch hopped on a call with him and spent a few hours trying to recreate the glitch to no avail. He suspected that whatever Pike did, it might just be the key to finally solving the seemingly impossible Chauncey One Cycle. After Pike made a comment about Luigi still sucking with the vacuum after the sparks at the end appeared, which usually indicates Chauncey breaking free, Glitch, along with Red and Saria, theorized that you could re-grab Chauncey by letting go of R for one frame, effectively pulling off a frame-perfect R pump but without pressing L and that the control stick should be in the neutral position to allow Chauncey to drag Luigi. The glitch doctor began to test his hypothesis, and then... Oh my god, I got it! Oh my god! Oh my god! All hell broke loose. The Chauncey one cycle was actually real, and people couldn't believe their eyes. Immediately after Glitch posted his successful attempt on Twitter, People flooded to the Luigi's Mansion Discord voice chat and began to learn and practice the one cycle. I was in there sitting in that call until 3 in the morning with about a dozen other people, witnessing people get the hang of the trick and even getting runs going with it. Saria found that Chauncey one cycle, or ah! for short, saved approximately 33 seconds in all categories. No world record was safe anymore. 
The next day, however, top runner Jared's Giants briefly stole the any% percent world record with 757, a run that featured sock folder era basement strats, a two cycle king boo, but got the record thanks to the Chauncey one cycle. Hours later, Joven would beat this time, got King Boo one cycle as well, and earned a 744. This record would stand a month before Pablo would beat it on December 18th with a 738, which is where the record stands as of making this video. Despite Chauncey one cycle being the single largest time save in nearly a decade, it is a very inconsistent strat. Runners can go from nailing it many times in a row, all before a sudden drought. Although every record in the game is very vulnerable right now, and any percent could easily be sub 730, the trick's inconsistency has ushered in a new era of chaos for Luigi's Mansion. Many runners are not very pleased. Area 1 is now a speedrunner's prison, and Chauncey is the warden holding the key. So, that's the current state of Luigi's Mansion any percent. Or is it? It is now December 2022, and just a couple weeks ago, the game was once again unexpectedly changed forever. Welcome to the era of inbound skews. On December 6, Mini Mini, Saria, and Snap found and developed the first practical use of skewing off of Ghost's inbounds. This could be used to clip into the sealed room early, which was a significant time save in the 100% speedrun. This set off a sequence of events where, after Glitch PhD saw a clip of Pablo skewing off a mouse in the Area 3 hallway, he thought, what if this could be applied elsewhere? He tested this out in the Area 1 hallway by skewing off of a mouse, walking into this corner, angling Luigi's flashlight down similar to the basement clip, and performing it by holding up and then pulling out the Game Boy Horror. He ended up clipping into the dining room in Area 2. This opened the floodgates to a completely new route to the secret altar, without the need to catch any portrait ghosts. Shortly after, Saria began documenting all the spots where an inbounds mouse skew could be used to clip into certain places. As fate would have it, there was a new fastest theoretical route in town, and here's how it would go. The run would be performed on the PAL version of the game, released in Europe and Oceania, where unlike the NTSC versions, the changes to the hidden mansion are much more drastic, including the mansion being mirrored, different boss fight mechanics, and different enemy ghost spawns in rooms and hallways. The run would clear the parlor, anteroom, and wardrobe room as usual, but as soon as Luigi enters the main Area 1 hallway, you'd perform the previously mentioned mouse skew into the dining room, head into the kitchen, and skew clip into the Area 2 hallway using mice that are only present in the kitchen in the PAL hidden mansion. From there, Never Doors found that you can use the Exploder Ghost to fully clip in the hallway, mouse skew to clip past the Area 3 door outside into the courtyard, and then use these tiny ghosts to skew Luigi, which can be retained as he falls down the well. Thanks to Never Doors and Mini Mini, it was discovered that this skew could be used to skip the Mario painting cutscene you normally see when you go down the well, and instead clip into the secret altar. On December 14th, Never Doors uploaded a low optimization tool assisted demonstration, or low tad for short, onto YouTube, which showed that theoretically, the any percent time could fall into the 5 minute range. As exciting as that sounds, the human viability of this route is looking unlikely at the moment. As of now, the skew in the kitchen appears to be a PAL exclusive trick. Not to mention that mouse skews are incredibly difficult and inconsistent. The fact that there are a few of them is going to deter most runners from switching to this route, so I wouldn't expect anyone to take the plunge anytime soon. Special shoutouts to Glitch PhD for helping me with research for this video, as well as making some of these important discoveries himself, as well as providing me with the Lost V-Man runs. He also made an incredible one hour long video talk about most of the glitches in Luigi's Mansion. That video barely has a thousand views, which is just criminal considering how well edited, informative, and funny it is.
please go watch that video if you want to learn more about Luigi's Mansion glitches, his video about discovering Chauncey 1 cycle, and of course, feel free to join the Luigi's Mansion speedrunning Discord. Additional shoutouts to Pablo and Red for assisting with research. Links are in the description below. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.